you guys, we're in Hawaii! Okay, so I'll explain a little bit more as to what we're doing here in Hawaii, but the first stop of our trip is the Hawaiian Style Cafe. And you guys, I actually looked up, you know, where we're gonna go eat for breakfast before we decided on a spot. And just as a precaution, I asked the lady at the car rental place, just off the top of her head, what would you recommend as the place to eat? And she said, this exact cafe, Hawaiian style cafe Hilo. And so I'm really excited. It looks like they have some really good poke bowls, breakfast, brunch, all that good stuff. They actually close at two, so we have 40 minutes to eat, but I'm super excited to be in Hawaii. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay y'all, I look so crazy right now, but we just came into Safeway to do some grocery shopping, get some water and items that we're gonna need for the next couple of days. And also get my mom some flowers because tomorrow is her birthday. But when I tell you like stuff in Hawaii is so expensive, like I don't know if it's the import taxes, fees, all that kind of stuff. I was looking at watermelon right now. Tell me why a quarter of a watermelon is $15. $15, we got $11 here. Half a watermelon, $20. I'm shook. I'm shook. That's crazy. That's crazy. Everything is just so crazy expensive. I am about to go and ring up this cart and I'm scared. I'm like, please, like my wallet needs some rehabilitation. Anyways, just wanted to share that. Crazy. Thank you. Good morning, friends. Okay, it's now our second day in Hawaii, and I'm not too sure what exactly I told you guys yesterday. It was kind of all over the place, but essentially we came to Hawaii to the main island, like the big island for my mom's birthday. And I'm like, mom, good for you. Now she doesn't take simple birthdays at home. She's like, we have to go on a trip. So this is actually our second time bringing her to Hawaii. And honestly, she deserves it. Like. I just feel like adulting is so ghetto and I really miss being a kid, being at home with your parents, you know, getting to see them every day. I realized I have not been to my mom's uh, place this whole year. Like I've seen her on other trips, but I haven't been to her place for the whole year. And it's just so sad, you know, because they're getting older and I just wish that I was like, I'm able to see my parents more often. But I'm really glad that we have the opportunity and the privilege to come on trips like this and celebrate um, birthdays and other events whenever we can. So we are here on the big island. So we're actually staying in Hilo, which is um, on the east side of the island. And you guys, the Airbnb that we're staying at, the host really did her big one. Like she deserves her flowers because when I tell you every need that we have has been anticipated. Like the space is, is clean, it has, it has everything we need. And so whenever you come to Hilo, I'm gonna leave the link in the description for the Airbnb. Like definitely do not hesitate to book with her because she's amazing, okay? So we're staying in Hilo, but then my mom was like, she's heard a lot about Kona, which is on the west side. And so she's like, um, for my birthday, I wanna drive over. It's about an hour and a half drive over to this side we just got here and honestly i realized like this island it might be the biggest in hawaii but there's really not much going on like the drive over was very rural um very just very green not much happening at all and oh snap hold on the water's coming the water's coming i mean we kind of heard that before we came here people were like this is not necessarily the most exciting island that you can go to in Hawaii, but the nature is still beautiful, of course. So we just drove an hour and a half, almost two hours to get to Kona. 
and my mom is so scientific she's so like smartest woman i know honestly and so for her birthday she wanted to go to like some salt plants salt manufacturing plants see you know how salt is i don't know from the ocean oh snap so that's what we're gonna do right now and then we're probably gonna do like a salt water foot bath kind of thing i don't know like i said there's not really like that much exciting things happening on the big island but i'm just here to show support and love to my mom okay that's all i can do um so we're gonna enjoy the views while we're out here and family time and that's about it but yeah y'all we are in hawaii i'm so excited to take you guys along we got two more days stay tuned oh did we oh you did that's why i said we go back to the plant some deep sea water so the water comes from 2200 feet okay right now how we actually have one of the deepest pipelines in the world we also do have one that even goes down to 3000 feet okay and um the warmest water comes up to us at the surface it's around 45 to 47 degrees so how are you guys with the cold uh, not too bad we'll, we'll have to see. california <laughs> yeah california parts about this experience is definitely seeing each other's reaction okay <laughs> these blue bottles are going to be our magnesium they actually come from our evaporation process and you can see it right over here oh cool so magnesium is really good for your muscle stabilizing your blood pressure and your blood sugar once okay. you guys get doubled into your foot so you're just going to pour the whole bottle in there some people even like to massage your legs with it you okay. can do that if you like deep ocean cold water foot soap you know, 30 minutes okay so what we have here she said it gets like 40 degrees. <laughs> Wanu. <laughs> Wanu. <laughs> and then they have a magnesium uh, liquid that helps with like stress and calming the nerves and everything. I'm so nervous. <gasps> Mom, what are you doing? Hurry up. What are you doing? <laughs> It's so cold, it oh. seems like it can even like numb your feet a little bit. Oh my gosh. She said it's better to take the your feet in and out for circulation. Oh snap, it's so cold. You know like, how does she know? I don't want it to flow over, you know? Exactly. I'm gonna pour it yeah, in. What I wait for. Hopefully it still does what it needs to do, you know? Yeah, oh my god. I was not expecting it to be this cold. It's cold water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with soup, with plenty of onions, guys, tomato in a can. I already have a petite guys, as well as the tomato sauce. Tomato paste. It's a paste that really brings out the love No, mom, it's the smokiness. Some, somehow they get it smoked with the beef. 20 minutes later, that was quite an experience. Very unique. It's basically just taking like an ice plunge, but just for your feet. And I'm convinced that I don't think I would be able to do an ice plunge. Like that was so cold. Um, and do I feel like it increased my circulation? Maybe, not necessarily, but very unique experience. I recommend, I mean, I, why not? Now we're gonna head to a tour of the salt plant here in, in Hawaii. It's like Hawaiian salt plant tour. Um, and see how they, I guess, harvest and, you know, produce salt. And then we're so hungry, so we are gonna head and get some Hawaiian barbecue after. So I'm not sure where we're gonna go, but we're all craving that. So I'll keep you guys updated. Where I will share a little cultural and historical information on how we're able to tap into the 2200 feet of deep sea water that we use for our salt. We'll then make our way across the site up into the salt pits where you'll be able to see the different levels of water evaporation and sodium crystallization. We're then gonna head back to the gift shop where we will be finishing up our tour with a little taste testing of the various salts that we have available and we have 14 different ones in there for you. So nice. you might be just a little salty and thirsty by the end of the day. <laughs> so Hualalai is one of our five major volcanoes. She's an active volcano. She's just dormant right now. The other four are Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, Kohala, and Kilauea. 
1801, she erupted, and when she did, she took our shoreline out one mile, and in that process covered most of the fish ponds in this area, with the exception of one. If you take a look up and down the coastal area here, you'll see a thin strip of turquoise. Then you'll start to see it turn deep blue quite quickly. Approximately 300 yards out, we are now over 1,000 feet deep. And to put things into perspective, uh -huh. deep sea starts off at 656 feet, or uh -huh. 200 meters. At a mile out, we're now over 2,200 feet deep, and at a mile and a half out, we're now over 3,000 feet deep, and only in this area because of that eruption. Wow. So when I shared with you that we are the only company to produce this deep sea salt, well, that was a true statement, but nothing because of what our company had done, just the perfect condition set up by our island for us to be able to tap into that unique resource. So we're very, very fortunate for that. As you're heading up there, take a peek into the tunnels, you'll see different levels of water evaporation and crystallization. Okay. Just yesterday, the team did some harvesting. We'll take a look at the final product when we come off of the salt beds. Now, when the team first starts their harvest, the very first step that they'll do, they'll put a little cold water on the outside of the unit. That is to cool those units down, and that's because they are manually extracted. The very next step is they'll start to move all that salt from one end to the opposite end. We call it shaking. So. They'll turn off fans, they'll lay flat, they'll start a quarter way back, then they'll pick up that tubing as they're standing, they will shake that quarter for it and they will do that in quarter increments. Once all that salt and liquid is at the opposite end, they'll begin to hand scoop all that liquid and salt. They'll put it into these big colanders with a bucket below. Whatever liquid they capture is what we bottle. That's drops we add into your water. That salt is still very damp with minerals, primarily magnesium. It will then go into one of these gravity drain hoppers here. It'll sit there for about two to four weeks to drain out about three to four gallons of that mineral rich liquid. So from the time we get this deep sea water to the time we get that salt on to the table, we're looking at about three and a half to four months. It's a very, very lengthy process. Okay, we got the salt tunnels. So they have... What are we supposed to be able to see? But where? It's closed. Is that it? Oh, inside here. Oh. Behind the screen. I'm not sure what I'm like looking at right now. Different levels of evaporation and crystallization. I'm not really seeing much. Oh, maybe over here. Oh, okay, hold on. Do you see that? Okay, you see the salt over there? Okay. How cool would it be one day to own a, own a farm where you are producing things and it takes chemistry and and all that kind of stuff like sometimes i'm like i'm not smart enough for all that but i would love to be what would i like to grow i'm not sure yet but that would be really really cool super cool right about there is oh, good wow. so from about the halfway mark up is what we don't want our salt to look like it's over dried salt okay. this morning it was not fully crystallized over i actually took this chunk right here wow. from this area right there okay, okay. so I'm gonna do this first and then oh, I'll tell you how to do it because it's hot. super hot. What you wanna do, but let me do it first, you're just gonna go to the top and just do a quick press down and you'll see how that water seeps up. Oh. Just, it's a quick light press down. If you go too deep, it's gonna burn, it's hot water. <gasps> when that water comes up, you can just go ahead and get your finger in and out. You'll feel that it's gonna feel very viscous, very silky. If you to taste that, it's going to taste very bitter. Oh, wow. That's magnesium right there. So if you'd like to do that, again, I'm just going to show you just a quick down and up. It'll seep through. So all you need to do is just put a little bit there and the water, give it a little time. It'll seep through. Yep. It's hot. So you just want to do a little bit through. You see how that's breaking through? Just one finger. Yep. Oh, there, wow. It's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then you'll feel that liquid. You got some right there. It's coming. It's seeping through. Now, this is our flaky salt. This is what you'd use. So what happens is that it'll just go layer upon layer of flaky salt. That's this right here. This is about five to six layers. Super, super thin. So if I take a piece of that, 
this is what you use in your cooking and your salads and your desserts. That's this right there. Oh wow. Yeah, beautiful salt. That's cool. But this right here is your flaky salt. You see how that's flake like that? Mm -hmm. You break that down and that's just this right here. Wow. So this is what you use in your cooking and your salads and your desserts. I'm gonna hold this there because I'm gonna do that for a reason. I'm gonna scoot you right back that way. This right here, cooler temperatures, so hotter temperatures you'll get this. Cooler temperatures. Well now I'm gonna ask if you could grab that side for me. Or anyone and pull it back down. Ooh. I'm gonna show you the two, two different types of salt. I'm just gonna come back this way. temperatures now this right here in this hand is the early stages of this so what I said pyramids. starts as your pyramid salt you see on the top there's a pyramid there on the bottom you'll see the outline of a pyramid I mean it's pretty distinguished there oh, look at that. and then that was sure. this one so, here's, here's another one look at that wow. you see that Nature. Wow. Literally yeah, and That's then so this cool. right here, it'll compound, it'll That's become this so right here. Chunky. Give this in the shade right so here. So you said this is the first before this? The so this is the early stages and then it becomes this. Wow. So cooler temperatures right here. I'm gonna grab this one, I like that one. Cooler temperatures right here, hotter temperatures right there. Okay. So this one will compound. You can see how it's crystallizing going up. Yeah. This one is crystallizing spreading out. Oh wow. So just because of the temperature will do that. Okay. We're going to be heading everybody back to the Rico store where we're going to be finishing up your tour with a little taste testing. Okay, next we're going to do a salt tasting tour. There's 19 different kinds of salt. So I'm really excited. Oh, wow. Now Excellent. I'm going to come around Thank you. each table. I'm going to start to move some salts around. That's kind of cool. And I'm going to base it on how I'm setting up your um platter so give me a second it's gonna just take me about one minute and then we'll start okay i'm gonna try cucumber with seaweed Rosemary. Yeah, that does bad But you have to. That's what I'm saying. But that is why you want to that. Exactly. That one I'm getting more of the rosemary. Next I'm gonna try the poke bowl. That's right. When I tell y'all, this is probably one of the best tours that I've done ever. I'm not lying. So sweet, so knowledgeable. I learned a lot. I feel like I was actually at, well, I was at, um, you know, manufacturing plant of salt and just hearing about the chemistry and all the, the whole process. It's just, I loved it. I loved it tasting the salt, which I didn't even think that it was going to be included like that. You know that you know bowl of veggies and fruit to be able to taste all the different salts really amazing and we told them it was my mom's birthday and they gave us a free um a can of my mom's favorite salt so just like really sweet highly highly recommend if you ever find yourself in kona on the big island i'll leave the link down below come over here support learn about the salt get some salt tasting you won't regret it okay but now the time has come for us to go and eat lunch. I'm so hungry and I don't know where we're going, but we have to find a Hawaiian barbecue. So that's the next stop. Stay tuned. Good morning friends, it's now the next morning 
and we are up and out it's so beautiful like look at this look at this beautiful blooming tree behind me like one thing about being on god's creation it's going to restore you in some way you know what i'm saying it's going to re-energize you it's going to give you hope for tomorrow i don't know something about it especially when the sun is shining like <laughs> don't even get me started but anyways today is our second to last day in hawaii we're back in hilo and my mom wanted to do some like tourist attractions today so we're at akaka falls right now it's a waterfall i think we might try to do one more waterfall as well rainbow falls and then check out a volcano today so it's gonna be a exploration adventurous type of day so i'm really excited we just bought our tickets for the the waterfall right now and they said it's 330 steps down and 330 steps back up so your girl is definitely gonna break a sweat but it's okay because we need to get active because i've been eating way too much so let's go and see a caca falls here we go getting started look at this beautiful trail I definitely broke a sweat as expected but the view is worth it look at these falls We just finished at uh, Akaka Falls and we saw a fresh coconut stand with juice or I think actual coconuts and pineapple. So we gotta stop by. Let me show you. Perfect, perfect weather. It's called Aloha Farms. Mana's Aloha Farms. <laughs> yeah, like this right here. So you drink the juice like she's gonna do right now and we put it on the pineapple after. Oh, nice. Yes. Excellent. Where is it delivered from? My friend down the road. Oh, really? I, I see. That's good. Uh, you got me with that as well. Ooh, yummy. Nice. <laughs> That is so juicy. That is so juicy. I love the fresh coconut. The fresh coconut is delicate, like that's a flavor. Yeah, I've never tasted anything like it. I love it, and it's not too sweet. I could put it in like you can make a savory dish. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Very simple. Last time, nineteen. Aloha. All right, next stop, Kuhio Grill, home of the famous one pound Lao Lao. Since we didn't get actual Hawaiian food yesterday, we had to do a redo today. So let's see what's going on in here. So at this restaurant, I got the pork cutlet, teriyaki chicken, some rice, macaroni salad with some gravy. Wenu got the Kalua pork with fried rice and mac. And then my mom got the one pound Lao Lao with the chicken. Honestly, this is gonna be an unpopular opinion, but I just feel like the flavors were lacking a little bit and I've had better Hawaiian food in the States. Oop. <laughs> but afterwards, we went to Napoleon's Bakery to try malasadas, which are traditional Hawaiian desserts and they were pretty good, very fresh. Um, I like them. All right, friends, we just made it to our last stop of the day. And this is where I'm gonna end the vlog, but my mom insisted that we come to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And so we're just driving through the park. It's about to close or it's like about to get dark. So we're just driving through and we came to the lookout spot of Kilauea, which is an active volcano. Um, it erupts quite often, but we are, we're just at the overlook right now. You can kind of see the steam coming up from underground. Wait, hold on, let me see if I can show you. Can you see the steam rising? 
<laughs> and over there too. It says this is Hawaii's like one of Hawaii's most active volcanoes. And so it's likely to erupt every two to three years. I'm like, that's kind of crazy. That's really kind of crazy. Imagine lava flowing through. Just flowing through. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's what I imagine. If it erupts, like all of a sudden you'll just start seeing red coming out from the ground. But yeah. It's about to be 5 p.m. We're ending the trip with a bang. We still have all of tomorrow before our flight, but I think we're just gonna like really take it easy, get some Hawaiian shaped ice, nothing much, you know. But thank you guys so much for coming along with us. If we do anything else in the park, I'll show you. But yeah, this is gonna be our last stop. So thank you so much for coming along. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay, actually, we came to the steam vents. From the uh, oh, that's actually quite hot. Well, let's see. Oh, whoa, that's hot. <laughs> I know we have to be careful. You feel it? But it's like it's cold, it's cold, so it's like kind of like a nice warm hug. I probably should not be standing here. It kind of has a nice smell to it, too. Wow, steam just coming up from the ground. All right, y'all, this is for real the last clip, but just walking through and I really feel like I'm in the Garden of Eden or something. Like, this is just too beautiful, too incredibly beautiful. You can see the clouds peeking through the trees. You got these bluffs that are steaming with the volcano steam coming up from them. It's just too much. Oh my goodness.